What's up, everyone? Welcome to Gadgets with German. We have an exciting episode today. We have a lot to get through. As you can see in front of me, we have the latest Google products. Let's, see, let's switch the other camera and take a quick look at them. We have the Pixel 2, the Pixel 2 XL, and the Google Pixel Book. Everyone has been talking about problems with the Pixel 2 XL, the one you see right here. Other people like this one. Here's the new Pixel Book laptop. I really want to get through my thoughts on all of these. We're going to start with the laptop, so let's move the phones to the side. But please send in your questions, anything about the new Pixels, anything about uh, the Pixel Book Chrome laptop, anything about iPhone 10 pre-orders starting tonight that you want to know. Send your questions to us on Facebook and Periscope, wherever you're watching this, and we'll get through it. So let's start with the, the Pixelbook laptop itself. You can see it looks like a, you know, a billet of aluminum almost, sort of like some of the latest you know, Apple laptops, the silver ones. This part right here is an aluminum finish, and then you have this glass cap at the top here. You flip it open, it looks, or on the other side, it looks pretty much the same. On one side here, you have a USB-C port for charging and a little indicator light to let you know it's charging. And then you have a headphone jack, some buttons, and a USB-C port here as well. Now, the most interesting thing about this, and let's flip to the other camera so I can show you this, is that it's sort of a hybrid of a tablet and a laptop. And you can see it sort of has a convertible design. So this is what it looks like when you flip it open. I'm going to move it to the side here. And let's zoom in so you can take a look at this. So you can see the laptop here. And you can see this looks like a normal laptop. And let's zoom in and take a look at the, the, flipped, the flipped side of it. So if I go like this, I could actually turn it into a tablet right here. And it looks like, you know, like a classic tablet, an iPad, something like that. Now, the interesting thing to note here is that I had some concerns about this. So if you flip it like this on one side, it looks like a trackpad and a keyboard. It actually looks kind of funny. So it's like if you have this on your lap in tablet mode, you sort of have a, you know, a keyboard behind you. And it's sort of distracting to have like the fingers clicking there. I wish there was some way to avoid that, some other cover, something that would slide down when you have it in this tablet mode. But I guess if you have it on a table, it's not that big of an issue. And we'll jump into uh, more on terms of using it like that. But again, we're looking at the Google Pixelbook, brand new product, just going on sale. Send your questions uh, about this. Now let's zoom back out so I can show you uh, the other view here. So let's say you want to watch a video or a movie. It's actually interesting because you can just flip it around and have it look like this. But particularly, I like the main uh, laptop view, how we have here. And let's switch to the other camera so I can walk you through this uh, in more detail. So this is you know, the keyboard, the laptop. And I'm just going to move this down so you can you know, see the screen here. And the nice thing about this is that the, the hinge is very bendable. So no matter how you have it, no matter how you want to use it, it is uh, completely flexible. And I find the design to be ultra premium. And it's $1,000 for the base model. The base model, 999, 8 gigs of RAM, 12.3 inch touchscreen, and 128 gigabytes of storage. And it feels really premium, really nice. It's on par with, I think, to be an Apple product in terms of the overall uh, industrial design, other than that keyboard issue I pointed out. But the thing really holding this thing back, the thing that makes it hard for me to recommend to everyone is actually the software. So unlike the latest laptops you see from Microsoft, the Surface laptop, and unlike you know Apple laptops or Dell laptops, this thing is running a very internet browser heavy OS called Chrome OS. And it's basically a mix of a web browser based operating system with Android applications, Play Store, and Google services. And so I want to jump through it so you can see what that really looks like. So what you can do is you can see uh, you have the web browser right here. And you can see I have Google Docs here. So instead of having like a word processing application, what you have for the most part is a web browser. So that's Google Docs. Now the main interface you have here is this button right here to jump through your list of applications. So you can click this button, and you can see your other apps through here. So you have a file browser, a Gmail app, and then I have Facebook Messenger, and the Play Store, all sorts of stuff here. So what you have is this application. And you can see other apps that you have around here. So VLC, all sorts of applications that you can get 
uh, from the Play Store. So Spotify, Asphalt, A, Airborne, different games and such. So I want to give you an example here just to show you how this works. So I have a Gmail application here, and this is basically the Gmail tablet application. And the question that's raised by this operating system in terms of the web browser and having the Android Play Store integration on here is what happens when you want to jump into an application? Are you choosing between the web? Do you choose between an app? How do you know which to use? It's a Chrome OS. It's an internet heavy operating system, but you also have applications on here. So it's an interesting conundrum that this comes down to having both on here. Sometimes it feels like, is this a tablet? Is it a web browser based operating system? But I guess when you flip it over, it's very tablet heavy and it's more intuitive to use uh, the applications here. Now I want to jump through. the application. Now some of the apps it actually marks to tell you if you have both. So on Gmail you can see I have the regular Gmail icon here and the Gmail Chrome web extension here. So I click this one to go to the web, I click this one to go to the app itself. It is sometimes confusing so you have to make that choice but good thing they know it. Otherwise this looks like classic Android. You have folders uh, and such here as well. Now jumping back in here, you can see that it has a lot of Google services. So if you're someone who's extraordinarily heavy on Google services, you use Gmail, you use Google Docs, the Play Store, Google Calendar. This is a total Google device, but at the same time, you can get an iPad or a Mac or an iPhone and have all the Google applications on there as well. Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Keep, uh, and whatnot. Now, something interesting is that you can actually run like basic phone Android apps on here as well. So if you want to go to YouTube, you can launch the YouTube application here. There's the X right there. And you know, this is the standard YouTube application that you would get on an Android tablet. But if you didn't install the YouTube app, it would take you to the YouTube website. And you can also get apps like Snapchat and Instagram. So let me show you here. Here's Instagram, here's how it looks. I remember, if you remember when the original iPad first came out, you were able to run iPhone apps on here and it would sort of look blown up in the middle. So sort of something like this. Overall, it's not a really great experience having to be choosing between the website and whatnot. But if you flip it over out of tablet view, let me show you how that looks here. So we're back in the regular laptop view and let me close that and I wanna open an app uh, like Instagram. You can see that you can put it in sort of its own window. So you can have like an Instagram here, you can have a web browser here, and then if you want to launch uh, another application that is an Android app, let's say it's Snapchat, you can make that a smaller window as well. So you can have other applications, phone applications running around here. So basically what you're getting here is sort of like a multi-hybrid of smartphone applications, tablet applications, and websites. So you really have to pick and choose what you want. It's sometimes confusing uh, to me as the user, but overall at least you get, get the choice. So I mean that takes me to my drawback here. I feel like tablets are tablets and phones are phones and laptop computers are laptop computers. I and mean, if you're already going to spend $1,000 on a laptop computer, you might want something that is you know, directly a computer, whether that's a Mac laptop, a Surface laptop, or a Dell, or an HP, or something like that. I feel like there's too much stuff going on here. But if you want to just dive into Google services, you don't want to install those applications, you want to go pure Chromebook, you're going to get something that boots up really fast, connects to your Wi-Fi connection instantly, and something that is really reliable for Gmail and Google Docs. But that's a lot of money to pay for something that's based solely around services and not you know hardcore computing and gaming. Now a couple other interesting things on this laptop that I want to show you is that it has the Google Assistant built in. Now I want to show you the keyboard for a second here. You can see it has this button here. The caps lock key is actually a key that launches the app grid. So you can see you press it to open and close the app grid. You can click this to see your other applications and whatnot. But there's also another button here. This button between Control and Alt is a Google Assistant button. So I'm going to press the Google Assistant button and it takes you into the Google Assistant you can see on this side. So I'm going to ask it a question. Hey Google, hey Google, who won the Lakers game last night? And I'm sure you could have guessed the that Lakers was the will question. Be playing the Raptors in Los Angeles tomorrow at 7:30 p.m. So it didn't tell me uh, who won last night in my testing. It did, but now it's telling me there's a there's a game tomorrow between the Lakers and the Raptors. And go Lakers, obviously. Uh, let's try another one. Uh, hey Google, what time is it? Hey Google, what time is it? Hey Google, what time is it? 
It's 1239. Now, particularly, I don't find the voice assistants very useful on laptops. Uh, I've been using Siri on a Mac for, you know, since it came out a couple years ago. Um, I don't find a lot of times that I'm using it, honestly. Uh, I don't find it terribly useful. It's more useful on the phone when you want to make phone calls, when you want to send text messages, pull up emails and whatnot. But at least you know it's there and you get all the, the Google AI stuff built in. And we have a few questions coming in here. Can you write and draw on the screen? Yes, they actually sell a pen called the Pixel Book Pen. It's $100. And what you can do is you can circle things. So let's say you're on a website. We're on my favorite website here, Bloomberg.com. And for example, I could circle something like Friday's iPhone 10 pre-orders will be crucial for Apple with the pen. And then it will actually pop up at the assistant and give me more information from the Google database based on whatever I circled. Or if you circle a picture of, you can see someone here, uh, Donald Trump, you circle him and then you'll get more information uh, from the Google AI through Google Assistant. More questions coming in here. Is it Android or Microsoft? Let me go to the desktop here so you can see sort of what it looks like when you have everything closed. But what you have here is Chrome OS. So this is not a Microsoft OS, Windows, or an Android OS. It's Chrome OS, heavily web friendly. You have Google Chrome here, that's the core of it. And then you have key shortcuts to apps like Gmail, Google Maps, YouTube, et cetera. But on top of that, it runs Android applications from the Google Play Store. And again, for those just joining us, we are talking about uh, the new $1,000 Pixel Book laptop here. More questions coming in here. Uh, is this the new version of the Chromebook? Yes, this is a Chromebook. So this is, a, it's called the Pixelbook, but it is their high-end premium Chromebook. And in summary, $1,000, it's very premium. If it's something, it's something for you if you're heavily into Google services. But if you want something with a bit more power, something that you can do gaming on, you might want to look elsewhere. You can even get something for a few hundred dollars cheaper. Now, the Pixelbook is only one part of the fall product story uh, for Google. Other stuff they're coming out with, of course, are the phones. So let's move this to the side and bring in the phones here. So what we have here is the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 2 XL. Now, the first thing you'll know, and when these started leaking out a few months ago, the first reaction I had was these phones look outdated already compared to what's hitting the market. Now, I just want to bring some other phones in here uh, so you can see. So this is the, the Samsung Note 8. You can see it has the design on the sides with the very slim bezels. And you can see here the bezels comparatively on the 2XL. They're much thicker on the sides in the top and bottom. So it is a bit outdated already at launch. And this is the Pixel 2 you can see right here. And you can see the size difference. So the 2XL has the 6-inch screen. And the Pixel regular, the non-XL version, has a 5-inch screen. Now, I want to bring in the iPhone 8 Plus here so you can see the size differences. So the 8 Plus has a 5.5-inch screen. The Pixel 2 XL has a 6-inch screen. And you can see it's quite a bit more screen real estate here. In comparison, the iPhone 10 that goes on pre-order uh, tonight, or midnight, I should say, has a 5.85-inch screen. So that's a little bit of a comparison for you. Now, in terms of who these phones are for, these are Android phones that get the latest security updates, the latest software updates from Google. They have some unique functionality, uh, so you can squeeze it to open up the Google Assistant. I'll actually show you that. So if you want to launch the Assistant, you just squeeze it, and it will launch uh, the Assistant there. It's actually a pretty cool feature. Uh, it would be interesting if the iPhone had that to launch Siri. I'm curious to see if that's in the new uh, user experience paradigm that's going to switch to other phones. Now, we have more questions coming in here. Actually, this one's about the Pixelbook. Can you buy the Pixelbook at the Google Store? And if so, are they going to overcharge me versus going to Best Buy? Yeah, that's a good question. So Google actually had like a pop-up store where they were overcharging the price of the Pixel at some point. Uh, they actually fixed that problem since then. But it's pretty much $1,000 across the board. I looked online. It's 1000 at Best Buy, uh, 1000 on the Google Store. So you can really get it from either. I don't really think there's going to uh, be a difference. It's just if you prefer to go with Google, you go with Google. If not, go with, with Best Buy. How are iPhone 10 pre-order sales expected to go? It's going to be interesting tonight. Uh, the pre-orders are going to be tough. There's not going to be a ton of supply uh, we've reported in terms of pre-order availability. It's going to be a rush. I don't think there's going to be so many people. There have, hasn't been so many people anticipating a new iPhone since maybe the iPhone 4 or the iPhone 6 in terms of you know pent-up demand, people waiting for something really new and cool, given the 6 design is pretty much the same as the 8 design, except for the glass pack, in my opinion. So a lot going on there. 
Uh, another question, can you compare the Pixel to the Galaxy? It really comes down to software. Hardware is so similar other than this, the size of the bezels and whatnot. And I want to go back to something in terms of the bezels here. So when these two phones were first announced, Google was basically saying that you're not choosing between anything but screen size. The functionality is the same. The camera is the same. The speed is the same. The software is the same. I actually don't think that's true. It's a noticeable difference. You see how thick the bezels are on the regular size 5-inch Pixel. It's actually unbelievable. It's even thicker than the bezels on the top of the bottom of the 8 Plus, I think. Whereas other phones, the Essential phone, the iPhone 10, is moving to a complete bezel-less design. The XL is not too terrible in terms of uh, the borders, the bezels, but it's not there. These are going to feel outdated as soon as you get your hands on it when you see other people using the new iPhone, the Essential phone, the latest Samsung phones, and phones from other makers, Huawei and Xiaomi and whatnot. But there is an elephant in the room I have to address. Before the problem started cropping out, when you look at these spec for spec, design for design, I really couldn't recommend the entry-level Pixel 2 because of how outdated it looks. But then the Pixel 2 XL has so many problems that people have been reporting. There's been reports of hissing sounds coming out of the speakers in the top and the bottom, but there's also been problems with the OLED screen sort of burn-in retention. So if you, you know, have something on your screen for a certain amount of time, it won't disappear. If you put up like a gray border, it'll sort of bleed in. I personally have not noticed any problems with the display on this review unit from Google, but I will note that there have been too many people reporting online and in Reddit and different forums to have problems with the screen burn in and there being like a blue tint when you hold the phone a certain way that it's difficult to recommend this phone until we have a, a very finalized answer from Google about what the problem is, how they're going to fix it, and really how widespread it is. But until then, it's a cool phone, and when they get those issues sorted out, I think it's a no-brainer to pick the bigger one over the smaller one. But if you do want a really solid Android phone that you know is going to work, you know it's going to get the latest software updates, you know is going to be reliable, and it has a premium design, it feels a little plasticky, to be honest, but it's more premium than some of the cheaper uh, Android phones out there on the market you would really want to go with this. If you want to be in the Samsung ecosystem, it's also worthwhile taking a look at the new Note 8. That's more in the price uh, category of the iPhone 10 and this bigger phone. But let's switch the other camera as we wrap up here. And what you have here are the latest Google products, the Pixelbook and the Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL. Please keep sending in your questions about these phones. Anything going on in the tech world, we'll answer them on Twitter and next time live on the show. So keep them coming, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.